Dissociation of sensibility is a very important term in English criticism and English literature and students are generally introduced to this in their honors course itself. The term was introduced by T.S. Eliot in his review of an anthology of the so-called metaphysical poets which was edited by A.J.C. Grierson. So that has to be remembered. Basically T.S. Eliot's essay on the metaphysical poets is a subsequent republication of this original review. Anyway, in that essay, Eliot argues that due to Dryden and Milton, something dangerous or something, uh, you know, deplorable has taken place in English poetry, which is the separation of thought and feeling. Now, you must understand this uh, in very simple terms. Even in our day-to-day -day life, we say that there is a difference between heart and brain. These days there are quotes in Facebook from Vivekananda. They say that whenever there is a struggle or there is a contradiction between heart and brain, follow your heart. And then some posts will say follow your brain. Of course, that is another matter. So that, that precisely is the difference between thought and feeling. Thought is our brain part. Feeling is our heart part. Of course, modern science has proved that heart doesn't uh, think. It is the uh, feel. It is the brain only. Two parts of the brain, higher and lower. Or if critical theorists subject again, we can say emotional part of the brain and intelligent part of the brain. But anyway, in a common parlance or at least... In, until the time of Eliot, feelings were related to heart and thoughts were related to uh, brain. Now, after Milton and Dryden, those were contemporaries, there is a permanent division in English poetry. According to Eliot, please remember, this is not a general truth, but Eliot feels so. That there is a difference in English poetry as to those who follow the line of heart that is the Romantics and some of the Victorians, etc. And those who follow the line of brain, that is Milton is an intellectual poet, Dryden himself. But there is no juxtaposition or coexistence of the two. That is what is lamentable. So this Eliot terms as the dissociation of sensibility. It was absent in the poems of the metaphysical poets primarily and all those who had come before, thoughts and feelings were unified. Okay, so as Eliot famously says, a thought to Dan was an experience and it modified his sensibility. Or Dan could feel a thought as immediately as the order of a rose. Now it has also been suggested by critics that by, you know, such statements, Eliot is not so much exploring what is actually there in metaphysical poetry, but imposing certain things on them, which is in line with what he practices or what he uh, feels poetry should be like. Okay, so in the poems of John Donne, Andrew Marvel, and so by implication T.S. Eliot himself, uh, sorry, I'm not Eliot. I mean, just <laughs> I'm acting out the persona. And then Ezra Pound. So in their poems, thought and feeling are united like this. So they have a unified sensibility. But in case of quote-unquote lesser poets like the neoclassics and the romantics, you know, either heart or brain is missing. In the romantic poetry, the brain is missing. That is the thought part. And in neoclassic poetry, the heart is missing. Apparently, it is true. At least, if even if in romantic poetry, you know, brain is not missing, but in neoclassical poetry, we can say the heart is often missing because it is always satirical, pejorative. The human compassion and sympathy is not directly visible unless you analyze and make it appear so that okay satire etc comes from the spirit that we should be better than we are so that way it is a human investment but otherwise at least in this part Eliot is apparently right that there is no feeling in neoclassical poetry 
but but Milton himself is a difficult case and here I don't agree with Eliot when he also did Milton I think there is a perfect combination of thought and feeling and as you know not everything Eliot says about his own poetry or others poetry are uh, you know is sacrosanct so we may exercise our own choice anyway so I think you have understood what is dissociation of sensibility I repeat it is the separation in thought part and feeling part which is which rather sat in in English poetry after Dryden and Milton before that it was unified and by implication Eliot himself and Pound and other modernists are reviving that now it is up to you whether you accept Eliot's argument or not you may reject, you may write your own thesis, that is what higher education is all about. And then there is another important argument in his metaphysical poetry, the essay. On that, uh, on that I will talk in another lecture. Thank you.